Hello again and welcome to today's Sugardale Charge Chat. I'm Scott Zarella, glad you are with us. And it's a real pleasure to welcome in, as always, Cavaliers Director of G League Operations, Brendan Yu. Brendan, great to see you again. Thank you for joining me. How are you doing today? Doing well, Scott. Thanks for uh, having me. Good to see you as well. Absolutely. Hey, Brendan, we want to talk all things G League and specifically Canton Charge, but being a member of the Cavaliers front office, I think we probably should take a moment and talk about the recent trade the Cavaliers were involved in because I'm very excited about it. Names like James Harden, Karis LeVert, Victor Oladipo, some big names have moved, but the Cavaliers were involved and brought in a couple of nice young players that I think are really going to pay dividends for the Cavs moving forward. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, no doubt. You know, when the opportunity came up, you know, we're really excited to bring in guys like Jared Allen and, and Torian Prince, the organization, you know, they're both high level players and, you know, I, I think they can really help us in the present and, and hopefully the future as well. Well, that's great to see because again, they're, they're young guys, which fits in with the pieces that we've already got in place. So again, I've, I've had people texting and calling me since yesterday and you know, what do I think? And I said, I'm excited. I'm excited. This, that's a good, uh, good couple of moves moving forward. And speaking of moving forward, we do want to talk about moving forward with the G League and the Canton Charge because it, of course, has been announced that there will be a G League season. There will be a shortened season. It will take place in a bubble in Orlando. Uh, Brendan, again, still some specifics to be determined and to be announced, but how much can you tell us about uh, the Canton Charge season coming up here, which is going to be right around the corner? Yeah, I think first and foremost, you know, really thankful for the, uh, you know, Cavs organization as a whole and, you know, especially Dan Gilbert um, for opting into the bubble in the, in the first place, you know, it's a, a good chunk of change to kind of opt into this opportunity. And I think it really speaks to the uh, commitment of organization to development and, and the Canton charge as a whole, as you know, you see some other organizations, you know, not able to opt in. And, and so we're, we're really excited to head down to uh, Orlando here in a couple weeks or so. And, you know, just, it's definitely going to be a, a different season, but, uh, you know, talking with the coaching staff, talking with some of the guys who got on the team, you know, everyone's really excited to be playing charge basketball again. You know, Brendan, uh, there's good news and there's bad news. And unfortunately, despite the fact that we'll, there will be a bubble, there will be games played for the charge, um, that does mean that there won't be games played at the Civic Center. So for our fans, I know that they're disappointed, but um, – all the indications that I've gotten that the fans that we have been that have been with us are staying with us, which is a great sign because all things being equal, we look forward to seeing them for the 21-22 season, correct? No doubt, no doubt. And yeah, it, it's definitely a kind of bittersweet to not be able to play, you know, home games at the Civic Center or, you know, have the support of Charge, Charge Nation kind of in person, but we know that, uh, that they'll be supporting us from afar and you know, watching the games and we, we hope to kind of continue the momentum that we had from last year and what well, was a shortened season where we played really well. So down there, but hopefully see him next, next year. Yep. And, and as you kind of alluded to there briefly, you know, the, the, the details still need to be finalized, but again, either watching or listening, all charge teams should be available for our fans to be able to still follow along the wine and gold. So just hang in until those details come out. Now, Brendan, as we've been talking here for a few minutes, it's the bubble. I understand you're going to be in the bubble. Are you ready for bubble life? You know, I, I think so, Z, man. You know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty simple guy. I just, as long as I can watch basketball games and, you know, be there with the guys, like, not too much bothers me. So, you know, I, I think I'll be fine down there. Plus, the weather will be a little bit warmer, so I, I can't complain. That certainly will help. Brendan, again, I don't know how much you can tell us, uh, tell us what you can, of course, um, the quarantining and things of that nature that uh, my understanding, it, it will be similar to what the NBA did in Orlando to finish up last year. What can you tell us about the, the quarantine situation for not only the players, but for a staff like yourself? Yeah, it, it's definitely a process. Um, and, you know, it seems like every day we get a new memo um, kind of outlining different protocols and and things like that. But, uh, you know, I think the, the first step is, you know, um, making sure all the guys before they come to come to Cleveland, you know, are at home kind of quarantining and kind of doing their best to lay low. And then we'll bring them here to a market to do a lot of medical testing and, and COVID testing for about a week of kind of basically just in your hotel room quarantine. And, and then from there, um, we'll hop on a flight and go down to Orlando, then another kind of three or four days of quarantine down in, or in Orlando before training camp officially starts. So, you know, we're trying to figure out ways to keep guys in shape during this and, you know, 
have different basketball meetings and, you know, keep the, keep the minds kind of from being too restless during this time, but uh, <laughs> it's definitely going to be a process, but no, we're, we're excited. It's, it's we're well worth the sacrifice. We're all excited for it for sure. Now, Brendan, again, we're kind of repeating ourselves, but it does have to be repeated that there are still details to be ironed out, but our understanding is that it will not be a full 50 game season. The number of games still a little bit up in the air, but it will be shortened to anywhere from between maybe 10 and 20. But um, I find it interesting because with the shorter schedule, no travel, um, how much does it really change the way the, obviously the league will look different, but maybe how you went into it preparing uh, for this uh, season? Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good question. I think uh, as we've seen kind of at the NBA level that, you know, when you guys have such a long layoff and, and stuff like that, injuries are, you know, unfortunately just uh, more prevalent this year. Um, we've seen it with the Cavs, you know, just with the unfortunate injuries that we, we've battled with. And um, so I think depth is important. And, you know, uh, I'm not sure uh, how much, you know, we might have our assignments or, or two-way guys down there with us just because of all the Cavs injuries. And so I think it's really important this year that we went into the bubble with 10 guys that I feel confident can all play and help us. And, you know, whenever they're called upon are going to be ready. And so I think depth will be important this year. And then, like you said, just with a shortened schedule, I know coach Nate always preaches this, but starting off strong is going to be even more important where if you can get off to a good start, you can kind of, uh, you know, finish ha you know, just okay and still make the playoffs versus if, you know, you got off to a slow start, you're really climbing uphill and every single game really, really matters and you feel a lot of pressure. So I think getting off to a good start will be important as, too, as well. Yeah, again, we, we referenced about uh, maybe 10 to 20 game schedule. Um, as you said, with, with coach and always trying to start off quick, uh, the rumors have it that there could be as many as um, eight teams making a playoff and so the, the emphasis of, to your point of getting off to a, a fast start is very important, but I also find it interesting because traditionally in a 50 or an 82 game schedule for the NBA, your first seven to 10 games is usually your ramp in to kind of get your feet back on the ground. The final seven to 10 are normally the games you want to play your best as you ramp into the playoffs. Well, the way it sounds, there's a possibility that that's all going to come together right now. Hmm. So talk about the dynamic of maybe what you'll be talking about with the coaching staff and, and the players of trying to balance doing both of those in that same condensed window. Yeah, you know, I think it's actually, somebody brought up a good point. It's kind of similar to the, the showcase this past year, yeah. you know, where I think it was like 12 or 15 games before the showcase, and that was our record, and that kind of gave us the seating heading into the showcase. So I think that will kind of be a similar mindset with that, and you know, obviously it's great that we've got the same coaching staff back. So we've got some veteran experience there and kind of know how, and then also with our roster, you know, we, we've got a, a good amount of returners and guys that have played in the G league before. So they kind of hopefully understand and kind of can help some of the new guys or some of the younger guys, but, uh, and just kind of be ready from the get go. You had mentioned uh, coaching and we certainly don't want to put any added pressure on a coach ranking, but as I've thought about it, do you think that fairly or unfairly, maybe coaching will be even at a little bit more of a premium, not so much the importance, but maybe getting through to the guys a little, letting them understand that, you know, there is no ramp in time as we've been talking about, we've got to really hit it strong. So maybe not so much the coaching as much as the communication might be a little bit more important than maybe we've seen in the past. That, that yeah, definitely. I think the, the communication from the staff and I know Nate and, and the rest of the guys do a, an awesome job with that and just how to, how do we find ways to, you know, build chemistry right now so it doesn't uh, take as long, you know, once the guys are all here on the court. And I think that'll be important because we've got a deep team with a lot of talented players. And I think, uh, you know, on court chemistry could, you know, really be a major factor in helping us kind of succeed down there. Well, we're going to talk about the players in just one second, but I want to stay on the coaching theme for a moment because of course there's always coaching changes throughout all sports at all levels, um, and certainly have been in the G League. But how important do you think it is to have pretty much the same charge staff back from a year ago with all of the distractions and the changes that we've seen in the past? It's nice to have that coaching staff in place. That's one less thing to maybe have to worry about. No doubt. I think the continuity will really help us. You know, all, the coaching staff obviously did an awesome, awesome job last year, as we all saw on the court. And, you know, have those guys back, kind of have a, 
understanding of, you know, where they fit in, what roles they have to fill and, you know, what jobs they do. And then also continue to help them grow and expand that, you know, their, their coaching abilities, I think is fantastic. And so we're, we're excited to have everybody back. Speaking of having some guys back, let's talk players because we do have three specific guys that fans will recall and um, recognize on the floor last year, Levi Randolph, Sir Dominic Pointer and Sheldon Mack. BYU, tell me about the importance of not only having them back as players on the floor because you know what they can do. Coach Ranking knows what they can do. They're default guys, so to speak, to go to. But also the importance of, again, under the dynamic of what this G League bubble is going to look like, new guys coming in, helping them get acclimated to the system so much faster. Yeah, no, I think it's great having those three guys back. They um, you know, what it, know what it takes to win. They know kind of what the coaching staff expects and they can be an extension of the coaching staff. Now, I think all three of those guys have some really strong leadership qualities and are able to kind of help convey the message from the staff to, to the rest of the group. And all three of those guys got called up last year. And so they, they understand kind of, you know, a rising tide lifts all ships. And so it's, you know, not just about, uh, you know, themselves or individual numbers. It's about team victories and making the right play and doing the right thing. And that's something that we preach as an organization. And I think all those, all three of those guys understand that and can kind of help convey that message to some of the new guys too. Cavaliers director of G league operations, Brendan, you joining us on today's Sugardale charge chat, Brendan, let's move on to another player that I find is kind of fits into a little bit of a couple different categories. Technically he's a returning player, but a lot of our fans may not recognize him. That would be Malachi Richardson. Uh, tell me about uh, his situation and the fact that, you know, you may not recognize him, but he is a returning player and he's a pretty good player who should be able to help the team out on the floor. Yeah, Malachi, you know, we were able to kind of claim him off waivers. I think it was a, a couple seasons ago towards the end of the year, knowing that he might not be able to necessarily play with us then, but hey, it's always good to have, you know, a talented player who, whose rights you might have for a couple of seasons. And, you know, Malachi is obviously a former NBA first round draft pick has played in the NBA and then um, was overseas last year in Italy and played really well there and, you know, wants to give it kind of a, another shot. And so we're, we're excited to get him. You know, Brendan, it's funny because again, it's, it's guys like that, that, you know, fans, they don't, they don't quite realize they'll ask me oftentimes about what's a returning player and rights and all those sorts of things. Well, this is exhibit a, Oftentimes you are acquiring a player and this is NBA is all sports. You're acquiring players oftentimes, not for today, but you're always looking ahead to tomorrow. And I think this is exhibit A that I think is very important that helps to uh, maybe clarify a little bit to fans what a returning rights player is. Yeah. You know, a returning rights player is, you know, in the G league, um, when you have a player on, on your team, you have their returning rights for the next two seasons. And, you know, returning rights means that if they sign into the G League, you kind of get first shot at your first dips at them. If you want them on your team, you know, they sign in with you. Um, so not only is it, you know, useful if a guy signs back into the G League, that's a good player. You can get them back. But, you know, the returning rights are valuable because they can be used as trades. And, you know, I know we all love J.P. McCarron and his, you know, feisty tenacity. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, he's doing really well overseas right now. And, you know, not sure if he was ever going to come back to the G League. We were able to trade his returning rights for uh, – Norvell Pell, who, you know, will be a big uh, defensive factor for us in the bubble. So we're, right. we're excited to get him. So returning rights are definitely a valuable thing. Yeah, I did want to talk about a couple of the new guys because, again, they're new to the charge, but not new to the G League. So any of our fans that are watching that have watched plenty of charge games recognize a guy like Norvell Pell and also Antonio Blakeney, who was the rookie of the year a couple of seasons ago. Norvell, a big man, reminds me – I'm always a guy that tends to, to see comparisons, whether they're accurate or not, but there's a little Andre Drummond in Norvell Pell with his size and defense in the paint. And Antonio Blakeney is just a guy that can put the ball in the basket. <laughs> you talk, what can you tell us about them? Yeah. Nor Norvell somebody that, you know, we've had our eye on for a while ever since, you know, he was playing in Delaware. He's gotten better and better every year. And, you know, it culminated with him getting a two way last year and, you know, playing some real minutes with the, 76ers, you know, like you said, like, like Big Dre, you know, he's a rim protecting big and athletic and can catch lobs and finish in the paint. And, you know, I think he's going to make the game a lot easier for, you know, our guards and also can cover up a lot of, you know, our, our mistakes on defense just with his rim protection abilities. And then, uh, 
yeah, a a Antonio, oh, man, just to get a, get a score like that in the draft, we're, we're ecstatic about that. I mean, I still have nightmares of him, you know, when he was in Windy City torching us at the queue at the time, or I think it was the queue, not the Rocket Mortgage. It was. The time, but it was. He, he rolled was. out of bed at 11 a.m. and gave us a 40 spot or, or something like that. So He did. You know, he's just an incredible score and a highly talented guy that, you know, it took a little bit of a circuitous pass uh, or path, I should say, you know, playing for the Bulls and going over to China and, you know, wants to give it another shot. And, you know, we're excited to get a talent like that. You know, it's funny, uh, Brendan, that when I saw that we drafted Blakeney, I remember tweeting out that it's going to be a lot more fun watching him score 30 for us as opposed to putting 30 on us because he can just score with uh, with such ease. A couple other guys that I feel feel free to mention, whoever you, you would like to here, but the couple other guys that you picked up either through free agency or the draft, I thought were nice complimentary pieces that fill roles because not everybody can be the guy to score 40 points or you know be the starter. Everybody has to fit the piece. And I think some of the other guys that you did acquire really fit those roles nicely. Yeah, you know, Kadeem Allen, we, we traded the ninth pick in the G League draft for, and, you know, if we're really fortunate to be able to get him in, you know, in the, in the draft, I think there were a lot of really good players, but I'm not sure we could have gotten a better player at nine, especially kind of fit-wise. And, you know, Kadeem's a, a pass-first point guard who can really defend and gets into the paint well. And, you know, I think he's going to do a great job kind of giving us a, a stabilizing force and, and running the team in that sense. Um, Aaron Epps, we were able to get in a – a trade a little bit while back from, from Northern Arizona. And, you know, Aaron's a guy that I've always had my eye, eye on for a while. And I know Kate, coach Nate always loves a, a shooting big and, you know, Aaron's, you know, six, nine, six, 10 and shoots 36, 37% from three. And, you know, I think can give us a lot of type of things that, you know, Al Herndon kind of gave for us when, you know, when in the minutes that he got. And so I'm excited to get him. And then we got, uh, you know, Anthony Lamb as, as the number six pick in the draft was the guy that all our scouts from, the Cavs and, and college scouts were, were high on as, you know, Hey, I think this guy's got a chance and he's kind of a, a versatile four, three type, mm -hmm. you know, um, the player, the two-time player of the year in the American East and kind of does a little bit of everything from, from that spot. And, you know, just a rookie that we can continue to help grow and develop and have some upside there. And then um, I know Charles was a little bit banged up in Cavs camp, but you know, the, the game he got in and then the, the practice he was able to play, you know, just to, shut down defender type, you know, can guard three or four different positions, can make a shot, you know, just can really get up into a ball. And I think could be really be a menace on the defensive end for us. And Brendan, my understanding as well is while players can come and go, it's not going to be nearly what we're used to seeing where oftentimes I'm doing my score sheet and it's an hour before and three guys are out and four guys four guys are in for two different teams and you're just scrambling to figure out who's on the roster uh, for the most part the rosters as is will pretty much be the rosters as is throughout the bubble correct yeah that, that's kind of the kind of the deal you know I think it's a little bit tougher to move guys in and out so quickly just because of kind of the, the quarantine protocols and and things like that and, you know this year it's, it's especially different where you know normally we head into training camp now and you've got 14 or 15 guys kind of fighting for 10 spots um, versus now it's just, you've got 10 guys and these are your 10 guys you're rolling with. And so that's, that's definitely a little bit different, but uh, I know there would be some different mechanisms of, I think there's going to be a, you know, available player pool down there that they're going to have maybe 10 or 12 guys kind of testing and, and practicing alongside as kind of guys ready for, you know, if injuries or team wants to make a change mm -hmm. or heaven forbid, you know, a, a team come down with, uh, you know, a COVID case or, or something like that, that those guys would kind of be ready. Um, but no, I think definitely a little bit less work for you in terms of uh, switching guys in and out of the box score uh, last minute. <laughs> That's never a bad thing either. Brennan, before we let you go, again, there's still plenty of questions to be answered and those will be coming out anytime. Uh, they may actually be coming out by the time you and I uh, finish this interview. But I think the, the most important question that I think all of our fans really want to know is, are you packing everything that you own to take with you, half the things that you own, and then the other half when you get there? Or are you just going to go to the local, uh, you know, uh, store down there and, and buy all your clothes at, at, uh, at, on site? I was uh, just talking with, you know, Sean Wyatt, who does an awesome job with, you know, all our gear and equipment. He's like, man, I, I got a big bag for you, you know, pants, shorts, shoes. I was like, 
I might just take whatever Sean packs for me and, and roll with that down there. I, I think we got access to laundry once or twice a week. So, you know, like I said, I, I, I'm simple. I don't need anything fancy, but. Well, the one thing you definitely won't need when you have Sean White around are sneakers. <laughs> we will make sure that you have shoes for every occasion and a different pair every day. Hey, Brennan, as always, man, it's great catching up with you. Best of luck to not only yourself and to the team. Stay safe. And we look forward to getting some more details and really looking forward to seeing the wine and gold back out on the floor again. Unfortunately, not at the Civic Center, but we'll take some charge basketball down in the bubble and really looking forward to it. Thank you for your time as always. No, appreciate you, Z-Man. Everybody stay safe and stay healthy.